Looking now for a bit of nostalgia on Gazetta. Last week we heard from Roy Hodgson on his life at Inter. Time now for Ray Wilkins to tell us all about his seasons in the sun with Milan as we recall a time when Serie A's one and only Bucci wasn't Torino's goalkeeper. <laughs> I'd say I was privileged to go there in, in 84 and to join such a, a fantastic football club. Um, the passion that the supporters shows is second to none. And I didn't realise how big AC Milan was until I actually arrived in Milan that day. And it really is an immense football club. And just to go out there and play with the, the type of players that I was able to play with and the players that I was able to play against as well was really a fantastic fi uh, feeling as far as I was concerned. The game was played more like a an international game, more like a game of chess rather than a league game. Uh, you really did have to pitch your wits against the best and that was week in, week out. So it was really a fantastic experience. It was an immense time for me. Um, the, the ground was always full, 85,000 people in the San Siro. And the passion that the Italian people display when they go and watch a game of football is something that is quite unique. Um, the first derby is something that will always stand out in my memory, Mark Haley scoring the winner. We arrived at the ground an hour and a half before the kickoff, and I, I remember saying to a few of the guys, well, where are the supporters? And they said, don't worry about the supporters, right? And we, were, we got in the ground to, to see what the pitch was like, and it was for 85,000 an hour and a half before the kickoff. Blue and black at one end, red and black at the other, the smoke meeting in the middle. It was something that was quite fantastic. So straight away, you was obviously up for the game, because if, if, if you really love playing football at the highest level, then that was unbeatable. <laughs> Probably the best side they had was when we left <laughs> in 87 and they got the Breikarts in, the Hulits in, the Van Bastens in and then obviously later the Desais and, and what have you. And I think at that period when Saki took over, he, he changed the tactics slightly in that he had fantastic players, great players, the Maldinis, the Tassotis, the Gali's, Baresi, coupled with the great foreign players that they had. But he asked them to press and he asked them to press really high. And, and I think that was the thing that took a lot of teams by surprise, whether it be in Italy or whether it be in Europe, was the fact that here we have a group of world-class footballers who are prepared to work their socks off. And that's exactly what they did. And when they outfought the, the opposition, they had so much ability that they just steamrolled the teams. Now, whether that was uh, playing for the Intercontinental Cup, Champions League, European Cup, whatever, they just pummeled teams. And it was purely and simply the fact that these great players were prepared to work very hard. In that period, uh, Milan were playing a 4-4-2 system, um, and very successfully as well. Uh, but as I said before, they pressed extremely high in the field. And when you've got great leaders in the team, like the Bereses, the, the Pulits, and, and those type of people, Ancelotti sitting in the middle of the field, then right through the spine of the side, you've got leaders. And, and it really doesn't take too much from the manager's point of view to put too much across because Baresi will look after the defensive setup as he did when we played there. We in actual fact in the three years I was there never did one session on our defence. Not one because Niels Liedholm, the manager at the time, had so much confidence in Franco to take care of that situation that we didn't do it and it was quite unique. And then you had Ancelotti in the middle of the field with Donadoni pulling the strings and obviously up front who lit at that given period was an absolute genius. So. They had great players all the way through. <laughs> Milan have changed their system uh, quite a bit and actually played three at the back with five in midfield. So Junior isn't possibly the greatest left fullback, so probably that's why they play with the, uh, the five, in that he can get forward extremely well down the left-hand side. When you look at the sides that we're talking about here, you have to also look at personnel in the at this given period, Milan are struggling, supposedly struggling financially as well. Therefore, they're not being able to bring in the best players that they would like to bring in. And I think Milan have a workmanlike side now, rather than the talented, gifted side that we spoke about before. I think as far as this Scudetto is concerned, may well have gone. But there are Champions League places to play for, and I'm sure that um, given Ancelotti and, and the winning sort of style that he likes to do, or go about, um, he'll want them to qualify for the Champions League. And a side like AC Milan really have to have that as their goal to, to qualify. And I think they can. I think they can. But certainly if they don't, then they must qualify for Cup of They still have 
immense players. Uh, you only have to look through the side and Paolo Maldini just jumps out at you. Still playing some wonderful football, even into his 30s. Um, and so consistently well as well. And then obviously up front, Shevchenko, who hasn't, I don't think, really fired as well as he has done in, in recent years. But he's still a world-class footballer. So they do possess talented players. Rui Costa is possibly one of the best attacking midfield players in world football. But you can't just leave it up to two or three. I think in the past, if anything, the supporters of Milan have been spoiled in that they've had really, truly world-class teams and world-class players. And probably going through a, a slight transitional period at the moment, they will get back, I'm sure, to the great heights of, of the past. Well, a little ray of hope then, in a very real sense, for Milan's fans.